Hi. Um, one of the questions we get asked a lot is how do we develop storage elevation curves for TSFs uh, in Muck 3D? So what I'm going to do today is just show you how we can use the tailings functions and a little bit of scripting to go through and create a series of deposition runs, raising the elevation of the, of the tailings and calculating the volume. So I'm going to start by just uh, loading up um, my grid here, and I'm just going to build a simple dam. So with this, this example, I'm going to be making the assumption that it's downstream constructed. So I'm going to create a um, dam, so structures, dams, draw a dam. I'll make the elevation 125. I'll leave, just leave all these other parameters the same. I don't care about the volume. And I'll just build something here. So there's my dam shell. Um, I've got 10 times exaggeration here, so that's why it looks so steep. So I'm going to merge this into my grid now. So I'm going to do grid, merge, merge dam into grid. And then I'm going to save this, and I'm going to just call it grid plus dam. So the other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to create some discharge lines on the upstream side of the dam um, at the maximum tailings elevation. So I'm going to do that using ooze. Discharge points, draw regularly spaced discharge points. I'll say 119, put my points at 30 meter spacings. And I'll just draw some points. There. And I'll save those as discharge 119. Okay. So there's my basic, um, my basic things I need. So now I'm going to create a macro and um, just record myself doing some deposition in, th in this point. So I'm going to hit create macro, record macro. I'm going to call it um, create storage curve. And I'll just move this out of the way. So to do this, I'm just going to go to the ooze and single stream deposition. I'm going to start out by ignoring the pond and just say that this is a dry facility. I'm going to say no pond, and then I'm going to use flow path down slope at fixed elevation. So this is a capacity model. It's going to take the points that we've created, develop flow paths down the face of the dam, and at whatever elevation we pour from, it's going to come through and generate discharge points at that elevation, pour the tailings, and give us the capacity. So my discharge points are discharge 119. Elevation, I'll say let's do it at 119, and hit OK. So it's going to come through, pour the tailings, and once that's done, there's my surface. I'm just going to hit end macro recording. It's going to bring up our macro. So this is a really simple macro. We've got um, our command here, so the deposition model that we ran. We've got the parameters that we passed to it, and that's it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get the volume of tailings that was deposited in here. And we're going to use a function in the Muck 3D API. So this is a set of Python commands that's um, specific to Muck 3D. And it's in the ooze, oh, sorry, Muck 3D dot ooze module. And we're going to import um, get depos deposition result. And this command is, it just basically takes this result value here, which is the value returned from this command, and it takes that and turns it into something that we can, we can access the actual deposition results. So down here, we've got all the results. It lets us access these values quite easily. So I'm going to say my deposition result is equal to get deposition result result. And to get my, um, to get my deposition volume, um, it's going to be dep volume is equal to dep result. I'm going to call a function on it called get property, and it's going to be called. Um, it's going to be the same value down here. So it's the the one I'm after is going to be total volume. So all lowercase with a space in it. Total volume, and then I'm finally just to make sure it actually got it. I'm going to say print dep volume, and that's it. I'm going to save that. And to run this command, I'll we'll clear graphics first. I can just um, come to my macro here, so create storage curve, drag it and drop it into a 3D window. It will go through and run. 
And then when it's run, we should see just a number printed out at the very bottom, which is our deposition volume. So here we've got 11188911139, which should match up this with this value here. So we've got our deposition volume. So the next thing we want to do is we want to come through and um, and we want to change the elevation that we're depositing at and go from maybe a minimum elevation up to a maximum elevation. And so in Python, we can do that using a for loop. So what I want to do is in each time we run this, we want to run this command uh, multiple times with different discharge elevations. So I'm going to say create a for loop. So we're going to create a variable within that called discharge elevation in range. So this will loop through a, a range of values. And I'm going to say I'm going to start at elevation 110 up to 119, or say 120s. And to tell it what, com what command, what code to run within the loop, we're just going to indent all this. So I'm using a, a, a text editor called Notepad++. Uh, it's open source. It's great for, for editing macros. And if I just select some text and hit tab, it'll indent it all four spaces. So the other thing is that this is going to run, run a bunch of times. And um, we, we don't want to lose this depth volume down here. It'll get lost in the noise. We want to store it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a a Python list and just call it um, volumes and use the square brackets that creates it's basically an empty array and every time we run through this I'm going to I'm going to keep my discharge elevation and the deposition volume um, in this list and so I'm just going to we're going to use volumes .append. so this just means add a value to the list and I'm going to use a square bracket because I want to keep two values so again I'm going to put a list within the list and it's going to be discharge elevation comma, and then depth volume. And so that will add this, um, this list to that every time it loops. The other thing we need to do is we actually need to replace our discharge elevation here with our discharge elevation variable. So we're giving it a different elevation each time we run. And then down the very bottom, what I'm gonna do once we get to the end is I'm just going to print my volumes array. So that way we can see if it's stored our discharge elevation and our volumes. So I'm going to save that, come back here and clear graphics and run my command again. And we should see this run through multiple times um, at different elevations and we'll get the volume deposited from that elevation. And so down the bottom here, we've got our array being printed out. So we've got elevation 110, 111, 12, all the way up to 119. So with, um, with the Python um, range function here, it, it's going up from 110 to 120 in steps of one. It doesn't do the last value of 120. So if we wanted to pour at 120, then we'd have to say up to 121, for example. Okay, so the final thing we're going to do with this particular script is instead of just dumping the numbers out to the bottom of the screen here, we're going to write them to a CSV file that we can load up in Excel. So I'm going to come down here, and we're, instead of just printing the volumes out, I'm going to create a new file um, and write them to it, write the values to it. So I'm going to use Python's with statement, and I'm going to open a file, and I'm going to call it securve.csv. I'm going to set it up to be writing as text, so wt. And I'm going to call the variable fh for file handle. And so this with statement, it will open the file. When it's executed the indent of the code here, it will then close the file. So I'm then going to say fh.write. And I'm going to start by putting in some heading, a header row. So elevation, comma, and volume. And because I want, when we come to write something else, I want it to go to the next row in the file, I have to put a backslash in before I close out my text string. This just is like a carriage return and goes down to the next line. So then I'm going to loop through my volumes. So I'm going to say for um, uh, D in volumes. So this will assign each pair of elevations and deposition volumes to this variable D. I'm going to say fh.write, and I want to take these numbers and put it into a text string. So I'm going to use Python's format command, and I can just put some placeholders, which are just the curly braces for the elevation and the volume, and then a slash n at the end, close my text string, and then I use the dot format um, function, and I'm going to say d0, 
and D1. So the brackets lets us access the, the first element, which is element zero, which is our elevation, and then the second one, which is element one, which is our volume. And so then that will write our volume and elevation, or elevation volume to the file. And then that's it. So I'm going to save this, and then I'm going to run my script again. And at the end of it, we should see that there's a new file in here called uh, called securve.csv that should have our data in it. So I'm going to just run this macro again. Okay, so now that that's run, if we go back to our um, Project Explorer, this SE curve, if we just open that in Excel, you should see there's our elevation and our volume. So there's our storage elevation curve for this particular structure. So things that we could do to, to improve this or to make it work in different ways, we can um, we could set it up to change different tailings, um, tailings types or beach slopes. So, you know, with if we, if we change our slopes, we're going to get a different storage elevation curve. We could run this with a, with a different pond configuration. So we could set the pond to be a certain distance below the top of our beach. Um, we could set it to be a, a certain volume or whatever we, whatever we think is representative. Just be aware that every, you know, every time we change something like our pond configuration or our tailings configuration, we get a new storage elevation curve. So now I'm going to run this again. Uh, I'm going to run it with the pond. So I'm going to clear graphics and I'm going to come back to, to ooze. So I'm going to create a new macro here and I'm going to call this um, create SE curve with pond. And hit OK. So again, I'm just going to record myself doing ooze single stream deposition. I'm going to use a fixed pond elevation and then I'm going to again use the flow path down slope at fixed elevation. I'm going to just use the same inputs for my base grid here, my discharge points, my discharge elevation. So for my pond, I'll say it's at elevation 116 and maximum containment, let's say 119 and hit OK. Choose our point inside the pond and it will come through and pour those tailings for us and give us our volume. And again, what we're going to do is we're going to take this code that's generated uh, in macro recording and we're going, to, we're going to basically wrap the same kind of loop around it, around it as we did before. So I'm going, to, I'm going to pretty much copy my code from here. So from my last macro, I'm going to indent all this by four spaces. I'm going to get my deposition results down here and paste it there. So there's basically the same thing as I had last time. Um, again, we need to replace some variables here. So I'm going to take my discharge elevation variable and set it to be, yeah. Uh, I'm also going to, for my pond elevation, I'm going to keep the pond a certain height for, beneath my beach. So I'm going to say that my pond elevation for each trial is equal to our discharge elevation minus three. And I'm just going to go up to elevation 115 here just for brevity. And that's all we need to do. So I'm going to call this storage curve plus pond. So the other thing that we want to do here is that we want to get our pond volume. And again, we can do that by accessing this deposition result that's created. So I'm going to create a variable here called pond volume is equal to dep result. And to access data about the pond, which are these values here, we use the command, the, the function um, get pond property. And the name, the name of the property we want to get here is fluid elevation, sorry, fluid volume. So fluid volume. So there's our pond volume. So I'm going to stick that in my volumes here. And I'm also going to put my pond elevation in here as well. So here it's my pond elevation is discharge elevation minus three and pond volume. So now this has four elements to it. In my storage curve here, I'm just going to put in um, the headers for pond elevation and pond volume. And here I'm going to add two more placeholders for my pond elevation and pond volume. And that's going to be equal to D2 and D3. So when this runs, we should get a storage curve and with our pond volumes in it. So I'm going to clear graphics 
and run that script. Now that it's completed, if I come down here, I should have a SIP storage curve plus pond. If I open that in Excel, again, we should have our pond volumes here as well. So this is just a really quick example showing how we can use scripts um, for, for creating storage curves for fa fairly simple structures. Once you start getting into facilities that might have multiple tailing streams, uh, this becomes a lot more complicated and it's Pretty, pretty tricky trying to get a storage capacity curve uh, under those situations. Um, we'll talk some more about this uh, on, our, on our help desk about you know, how, to, how to generate some of these, these curves for different situations um, for upstream construction or centerline construction, uh, as well as downstream construction like this. Um, if people have questions, please, we're happy to, happy to answer them. Um, thanks for, for watching and listening, and um, good luck with your Python scripting. Thanks.